how long uh, do you have to stay till? Like uh, you have till I have like to go a half to a hour recording session. So let's talk about uh, about music here. So. All right, we'll get into that too because uh, it's a uh, good thing. Well, that's what, you know. David Crosby is here to uh, you know talk about his life and uh, and also uh, the music cares is what all the money from the celebrity art auction goes to, and music cares is uh, it's basically a health it, plan. Yeah, for... it's a private health plan for musicians. It's it's more than that. It's a lot more than that. The the head of it, Dana, Dana Tamarkin, is sitting right behind you. Right? Oh, yeah, hi, little lady. How are you? Nice and to see you. And she uh, knows a lot more than I do about the facts and figures of it. And uh, and uh, I'll tell you, I'll tell you how it came to be. Uh, there is in this in this town, and has been for many years, a thing called the Motion Picture and Television Fund. Yeah, you know? they have the hospital near right. my house. Right. right. Okay. We go over there. We uh. We bring cakes to the Keystone Cops all the time. Okay, yeah. well, me and my kid. We felt a lot of us who had been in music for 20 years or more felt that there was no reason why our community couldn't try and help itself in the same fashion. My father was uh, in the film community for all of his life from 19, oh, I guess, 29 on. Is he a crew he was, member? No, he was a cinematographer. He oh. was an Academy Award winner. Uh, he, had, he got an Oscar. What's his biggest movie? What, what did he get? The High Noon. I don't know. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, I've seen that. So that's where the guy a, shoots uh, the other guy on the street. That's a and halfway decent film. Good, good description. Good, sure. <laughs> I just thought I'd sum it up. Uh, Are you a little dim in the bulb? Or No, no, that's not me you're talking about. You're thinking of Malibu. Dana. Oh, Malibu. That's right. Okay. Um, uh, I just have <laughs> other interests. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, it, uh, we felt, a lot of us felt, uh, that, uh, and we had, we started having meetings. You know, let's put together something uh, along those lines for the music industry. Uh, because there are a lot of kids coming into this town who are, you know, without any kind of insurance or without any kind of help or without any kind of guidance. And they're sort of like cannon fodder. They get chewed up by the machine and by the lifestyle. And, uh, so you're one able, of the people. You're, you're able to survive because you just made a ton of money in your music. And, yeah, uh, nice, nice. No. Now, is that right? I mean, did you have insurance? No, the money actually was, a, was one of the big detrimental factors. But to let me finish what I'm saying. All right. All right. Uh, one of the people who kept showing up at these meetings was Mike Green. Uh, he's Naris, right? He is Naris. And he is, uh, he's an incredible man. And, uh, he saw what was going on, listened to all these people trying to get this thing off the ground, and realized that he had the actual place where it could happen. And so he made it happen. He created within Naris Music Cares. And, uh, and uh, and he had the organizational ability and the talent and the belief of everybody, right. you know, to for them to be able to you know say okay I'll commit to this because that because my, I trust Mike Green, and all of us do. If you watch him uh, on the Grammys, which he puts on every year, yeah, we saw his show. Yeah, we saw him on that. Um, uh, if you watch him when he does that speech about the endowment for the arts. Yeah, 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 we're a big fans of that. Stand up and cheer, you know. <laughs> yeah, we're he's, big, he's, we may he's, disagree on yeah, that, but uh, I have seen I, the speech. Yeah, yeah well, <laughs> you're a Republican. Uh, no, I'm a libertarian. I'm an anarchist. Oh, well, libertarians I can work with. Um, uh, uh, and anarchists, actually. <laughs> both of those I can work oh, with. Oh, you're an anarchist, too, huh? No. I don't think there's any difference I'm a, uh, Republican. No, I'm, I'm, I'm another different weirdo breed. I'm a constitutionalist. <laughs> uh, David Crosby, so am I. And uh, although many accuse me of uh, being the only right-wing Jew in, uh, in America, but uh, you and I have a lot in common. So Music Cares does not take any government funding, right? No. Music Beautiful. Cares, music Cares does not Private. Yeah, it's private. That's good. And it, and it, the idea is that we're a community of people trying to help our own. And uh, uh, as uh, you can see on the, the stuff that Dan gave you, um, it, we do uh, counseling. We do uh, uh, referral numbers. We do... We help people get into drug, you know, programs. Uh, we we do uh, insurance programs. We do. Yeah, you know, a lot of people probably think it's all just drugs, this rock and roll. But a lot of these older uh, uh, rockers, uh, they, they're just getting older now, and they right. got screwed on their royalties and they have yeah. general health care. So it's not just drugs; it's no, just like a no. retirement home. I'll tell you for, another story. Uh, rock and I'll roll tell you another story. Yeah. There was a uh, a very famous band leader, Dan. What was his name? The guy that got put out of his house. Woody Herman. Woody Herman. Thank you. <laughs> the, uh, there was a, a really terrible thing that happened. A guy, Woody Herman, who was one of the great musicians, mm -hmm. a, a, like a national treasure level guy. He was a band leader. He, yeah. Uh, yeah. Fantastic guy, like one, Benny Goodman. One or, of the swing guys. Yeah. It, it was, it was exactly All the kids that. are doing that these days. Yeah. Well, he wound up in a circumstance where he got thrown out of his house and, he, and, and, and was totally broke and had nobody. Okay. And that was one of the things that pushed uh, a lot of us to realize that there needed to be a safety net 
There needed to be, you know, uh, uh, I mean, there's so many things that you, that you can do. You know, we don't have a, 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 a home, you know, where people like that can go to that which motion picture and television fund right. does. But, where's the, where's the home going to be? Are they, uh, but we don't have one. But, but, but that kind of idea, you know, the idea of trying to help out your own community yeah. Yeah. was what this was, you know, founded on and, and is trying to do. So, and you know what I'd, I'd like to find out is, I think there's a very, uh, uh, a line here where, uh, it, it, it's, are we talking about a zero tolerance policy in rock and roll with drugs? Because let's face no. it, how, I mean, would we have gotten Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band if there were no drugs involved in rock and roll? Well, I was there when they were making it. How high were they? And, uh, <laughs> how high were those? And, uh, and, you know, that's a tough question to ask, and I'll give you my answer, my own personal one. Me, personally, I think I would have done more and better work without it. Really? Yeah. Now, I think uh, that the problem when people talk about drugs is that they lump them all together. Yeah, you know? marijuana is not heroin, is not crack. Exactly so. Um, uh, if my kid came to me, uh, and said, hey, Daddy, I'm either going to go get out a, bot a bottle of Jack Daniels or I'm going to smoke a reefer. Which is it? I'd say, let me roll you the reefer. <laughs> yeah, I'm right. Because right. yeah, yeah. I, I, I can do yeah. it better than you can. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, people, yeah. what people don't have, but, they, they don't have any nuance when it comes to the differences of they things. They have no idea. I think and, and the government I, especially yeah, has oh, no clue. Oh, my God, they're out of control. But, but, uh, but when you're talking about the other drugs, we're talking about death here. Death. Yeah, but yeah, Walking, I gotta disagree talking, with you there. Death. I gotta disagree with you well, there. Well, you don't I, have the experience I do, I, so you don't. You don't well, think about it. I, 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 no, 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 no. You, uh, you're incorrect because I know people who've been in this. Hey, but. that's secondhand. Oh. I am the expert. Don't tell me any other kind of wing because I do know. But here's I what know I think. more about I, hard drugs. I, 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 no, no, let me think. let me finish. Hey, don't push me. <laughs> listen to me. I'm listening. You to just you. listen to me. I have something. I know to more about it than you will ever learn in your entire you're life. You're probably right. You've and it, been it's there. walking death. Listen yeah. to me. And it is you, walking death. If you got any other kind of opinion, you're full of it. No, I'm not full of it because I do have another opinion. It makes sense if you just listen to oh, me for a second. Oh, David, please. Be nonviolent oh, for a yeah, second. Yeah, yeah, not a chance. He's pushing me over here. He's I've pushing me. Teach your children well for good. If he thinks it's a good idea, he's an idea. I didn't say it's a good idea. I did. I do say this. At some point, drug use can enhance performance. Drug use can hogwash. Uh, I don't think it's hogwash. Drug use can make mo for more. Are you a performer? Yes, I'm performing right yeah, now you for you. My do drugs. Hey, you man. would never do drugs. You would never listen come to me. Hey, listen to, hold it Let, a second. You have no idea. You are a walking imbecile. I am not a walking imbecile. I'm a <laughs> yes, you are. Imbecile. I am sitting. I'm a sitting. <laughs> listen, imbecile. here's how it works, man. I'll tell you my it, point. You don't play as well. And that's the fact. I'm, I play, I and I did the drugs. I, I happen to know the truth. All right, You're talking from conjecture. You never, it. you never I'm, played a guitar in your life. Can I get a word in the here? He's Jeez. a frustrated drummer. If that I, yes. Oh, that makes it even worse. <laughs> All right, hold on, David. I, I want to make my. You're an point. idiot. I got to take it. You you may be right, but let uh, <laughs> let the public judge for themselves, please. This is what the show's about. I say my things, and then people judge if I'm an idiot or not. Happens on a daily basis. Don't be surprised. This is the normal show. David Crosby is here. He's uh, he's Give pushing his shoving. People five two zero ninety seven one zero from L A in the Valley, Orange County nine seven seven ninety seven one zero. You don't understand. I'm for music cares. It's a private thing where people take care of their own. It's wonderful, but I want to point out a fallacy that I think uh, you stated. Yeah, I, I think that I think that your point is more about the government attitude towards. This is it not all government. Than... I'll make my point in a second, please. No pushing. Let's be friendly. <laughs> Teach your children well, like Eric said. That's very nice. It's eleven forty two. David Crosby is here with the regular guys at Real Radio ninety seven point one. Five two zero ninety seven one zero from L A in the Valley, Orange County nine seven seven ninety seven one zero. It's the regular guys. I'm Larry. That is Eric. David Crosby has left the building. That was a little strange. Good riddance. I, you know, it's unbelievable. Uh, he just walked out during the break. He started pushing me, calling me an effing idiot. It's uh, what, what, fine. What, what, what happened? Well, I, you know what? It, that was uh, that was kind of strange. He got upset and and he left and. You know, he just he, he said, he I, said I, it didn't even feel uncomfortable to me. That what surprised me when Phil Collins was here, uh, you guys kind of went back and forth, and there was some discomfort. I thought we were having a decent conversation. There, I made a great and point. I couldn't even. Me. I couldn't even. All I was trying to say is, I beg to differ with you. I, you know, I'm not a veteran junkie, but I can tell you a thing or two about drugs. That sometimes drugs enhance performance. In that, uh, if you take a sum, they can open your mind to creativity. This is how, like you said, the Beatles on LSD. Uh, made up these word pictures that are classics today, okay? At a certain point, it becomes 
uh, a negative, okay? And that's, but he wouldn't let, he's hitting me. He's, I'm trying to make this point. He's that was hitting weird. me in here. He's what, pushing what, me, he's hitting me. During the break, during the commercial, he's calling me an effing idiot. He goes, look, we're only going to talk about my boring charity or else we're not going to talk. I say, goodbye. That's it. See ya. He walked out. What? See ya. I have enough of this crap. These pompous celebrities, people with two livers telling me how I can think and, and, and what the, calling me names. I never called him a name. What exactly Jesus happened? Christ, huh? What exactly happened? I just told you what happened. Are you dense? No, no. I mean, I, I'm sitting in the studio and I didn't really see much. I, what happened like is, we, you know, David Crosby is here. He wants to talk about his charity. Fine, I'm willing to. I'm all for it. I'm all for his wonderful. I love charity. For music here. Yeah, I, I really nothing, It's a great. It's not a government thing. I'm all for it. And then I bring up a point about drug use, and all of a sudden, I'm I'm an idiot. I'm an effing idiot. I get pushed and shoved. And uh, the man with two livers is telling me how to live my life and how to think and how to behave. The constitutionalist, the, the libertarian who uh, believes in free speech. Oh, give it a rest already, you pompous ass. Brooke in Anaheim, you're on Real Radio 97.1. Yeah, that guy needs to seem, he seems like he needs to roll a reefer. That guy, he's all upset and everything. Oh, we're having a great conversation. All of a sudden, you know, I, 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 that's enough. Here's our new uh, guest policy, okay? Uh, the people on the, who come on the show, like Mackenzie Phillips yesterday, perfect example. This is a nice woman. She plays, rolls with the punches. She knows we're just kibitzing. We're having a conversation. She calls us up when we're talking about her, and we go back and forth. We needle each other, and it's over with. It's just fun conversation. This guy takes everything literally. He's the expert on everything. I don't need this crap. From now on, you have sh uh, the guests on the show, Dan. You book guests, Joel and Dan. Here's the thing. You have somebody on the show. They're going to talk about what we want to talk about, and they're going to have fun. They either get the show or they don't. Or I, I don't need it. Good. Goodbye. Good riddance. Steven and Topanga, you're on Real Radio 97.1. Hi, it's Dr. Steve Larry. You're not an idiot. I think you're a little confused, though. I'm not confused because uh, I, I didn't even get to make my point to the guy. Well, I didn't I, have a, a chance to make a point. discussion. Oh, no, no, wait, 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 hold on point. one second. Wait, no, hold on. Larry, make the point because you really didn't make the point. My, so, hold my, on. My point is this. He is saying that uh, he said, you know, all dr zero, all drugs are bad. If you use them, they will hurt your performance. I said, hold it. Let me. I beg to differ. I think that drugs uh, normally are very risky, and if you take them, you're heading down a, a dark road. Whether it's a uh, reefer or or, or uh, heroin, you got to control yourself. You got to watch yourself. You got to know yourself. I've always said this. Eric has always said this until today. No, no, I agree with oh, you. Okay. Hey, I asked the uh, question. Uh, you know, <laughs> my point is this. At some point, when you're a performer, wh whether it's uh, a guitar player, a comedian, a writer, a screenwriter, a an actor, drugs can open the mind to experience and imagination and creativity that you may not have had or known you had in you before. It, it loosens up your inhibitions. This is why some people, they drink and they're the life of the party, because all of a sudden they've tapped into this wellspring of creativity vis-a-vis -vis the drug that they're taking. At some point, and the point is uh, not too far down the road from that, uh, uh, chronic drug taking has, and, and David Crosby was right, a deleterious effect on performance. You can't physically play the guitar. You can't physically act. You can't stand up. But as far as creativity, it can enhance creativity. But he, when he, he's, he's pushing and shoving and calling me an effing idiot because he's the expert because he took drugs for 25 All years. All right, now, Stephen, you've heard the point. You're the doctor. What do you have to say? Well... Uh, unfortunately, I think that David's absolutely right, and Larry's a little confused. Go go back to Sgt. Pepper's. The Beatles were young. They were probably at their pe creative peak, right? Yeah. yeah. All right, what would they have done without drugs? I don't know. We you know will what? Never I, you know, know what? I'll bet you. I'll bet you. I think they would have been. They would have been uh, Oasis. Okay? I will. I will bet that they would have done a lot closer to uh, "She Loves You" than "Magical Mystery Tour." Well, we'll never know, will we? Well, well, then you can't have a point of view on it that says you're right either. <laughs> Eric, I obviously, go, I, listen, obviously, I go, I go by the evidence, Stephen. I say, I say, no drugs. She loves you. Okay, pretty good music. Uh, more, some drugs. Well, there were some were pills. There, there, there were, there, there were some pills. Well, and then she there were some pills, you. but then they started getting into drugs a little heavier, and uh, you have these albums full of mysticism and creativity. And uh, I think the evidence speaks for itself. Some drugs can enhance performance. Some drug, but after all, even those performance enhancing drugs can also uh, be your undoing, and that's where. Uh, David Crosby was absolutely right, but he wouldn't even let me uh, get my point. Yeah, we made the point before that uh, when you're in control of it, you're fine. The moment it gets control of you and it starts dictating when you're going to take and what you're going to do, you're in trouble. Right. Eric is very funny at a party when he's drunk. You should see him. Uh, I'd love to see him. Three JD and Cokes and uh, yeah, Eric's a scream. You uh, wouldn't know it's Eric. I'll beat Robin Williams to a pulp. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, but I mean, and even if I'm wrong, uh, God forbid I should say something politically incorrect. Is that any cause for pushing me, for calling me an effing idiot without any, even hearing my point of view? I didn't call him a name. No, I didn't no. call him a junkie. We were being very nice. Uh, we were having, I thought, a decent conversation. This crap from these pompous celebrities who've been pampered all their life. You know, oh, 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 you took uh, drugs, uh, so you're right on everything. Good. He was hitting you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Larry and Sherman Oaks, you're on Real Radio 97.1. Oh, my God, I saw your ratings dropping as I was listening to him. I thought, this is unbelievable. You're just going to let him talk and talk and talk. No, and that's, why, that's why I kicked him. He said, I, I, look, we're not talking about this. I just want to talk about music no, here. So I said, goodbye. A, a sense of humor transplant is what he needs. I mean, it's, 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 I got out of the car when I got back in. Thankfully, you said he'd been kicked out of the building. I thought, now we're back to what's going on. Well, he kicked himself out. He gave that's me an ultimatum. During the break, uh, he said to Eric and I, look, we're not talking about this anymore. You're an effing idiot. I'm not talking about this anymore. We're going to oh, talk about we're going to talk about music cares or I'm leaving. I said goodbye. Goodbye. Yeah, See you. No, we no, gave him his no, chance. We sat through the Woody Herman story. We, we, yeah, we were was, being that gentlemen. Was that was fascinating, the Woody Herman story. Hmm. Tell me about Woody Guthrie now. Let's hey, go hey, through, hey, hey, hey. Let's get to Woody Harrelson. Hey, 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 you're an idiot. Hey, don't talk about Woody Guthrie, all right? <laughs> no, you don't know. You never even, you weren't, you aren't Woody Guthrie. How I, can you talk about Woody Guthrie if you're not Woody <laughs> Guthrie? Huh? That was weird. Wasn't the uh, Mike Douglas band leader named Woody? Now let's talk about him. Uh, he was the producer of the Mike Douglas show. My God, that was weird. All right, famous Woody's 520-9710. I've got a Woody just thinking about... I, I wanted to ask him about Drew Barrymore, but I couldn't even get to that. Uh, God, help us. Oh. I all mean, right, you all celebrities. make your point. Hello, Los Angeles celebrities. This is the regular guy's show. We don't need you. We don't need you. We can do the show as we always have with uh, uh, us two, with our, our opinions, and Malibu Dan taking the phone calls. However, if you'd like to be on the show, please play by our rules. Okay? Have fun. Come here. Be open-minded. Be ready to play. Be ready to fight a little bit. That's how we do it on this show. Thank you, celebrities of Los Angeles. You can go back into your stupor now. It is not NPR. Ugh. I was willing to give them, you know, music cares is a, is a decent thing and, and, and to hear about it, but then we have to talk about interesting things. <sighs> otherwise, know, otherwise nobody's going to hear about the, the charity. They're yes. going to tune out. Yeah, don't, don't get me wrong. It's a worthwhile charity because it's a private foundation. This is what uh, the regular guys have always said. If it's not government funded, it's not a bad thing if you're interested. So go to the celebrity art auction and uh, buy the etchings and the money goes to music cares. That's a good thing, but, uh, Oh, that's no way uh, for a, a To man. treat a lady? That's no way to treat a lady. <laughs> Real Radio 97.1, from uh, L.A. in the Valley, Orange County, 977-9710. It's uh, the regular guys. I'm Larry. That is Eric. Uh, you know, it took about 18 months, but I think, Eric, uh, today we finally, finally uh, buried the former classic rock format on this station. Uh, it wasn't on purpose, but perhaps <laughs> no, it was a... thrust upon us. Now, <laughs> All right, let me take more calls. And you know, okay. you know the thing is that... Uh, I I am a pretty serious critic of yours off the air when we get in scuffles like this. I, I like to have decent interviews with people. I like to go on, but I got to tell you, that took me by surprise. I don't think you did anything wrong there. Well, I and all, mean, you I, did, it, all you did was say you. I disagree. Not that I, not that I need uh, Eric Von Backpedal no, no. to back me up, but thank you. Thank you for well, that. Well, you that. No, because uh, <laughs> you were giving me grief that I uh, did something terribly wrong, like something... No, with Phil Collins, I thought we could have had a better interview. That's all. And I think we could have gotten just as much out of him than we did. I thought you kind of threw him on the defensive, but that was not the case Doesn't here. get any better than this. How big your huh? Well, you Huh? Well, I'm not going to disagree with that. But but this time, who who started the name calling? Well, he did. Said you're an idiot, but the the funny thing is... David Crosby started the name calling, he didn't not even, Larry Wax. He didn't even hear you out. Uh, you just said, no, I disagree on that. Right. And he didn't even wait to see why or right. what your point of view was right. or to what uh, how far you were going to take your disagreement. It was just, how dare you disagree with me? And this has happened so often lately when you were dealing with these people who got their start in the 60s. And this is what amazes me. This happened with Tom Hayden, David Crosby, people who made their, their, uh, got their fame and made their living doing good work. And their work was challenging the established, the assumptions, yeah. just the bedrock assumptions of society. Right. And now they get a little older and they come in contact with people who uh, were in uh, kindergarten when they were doing that. Right. And how dare us challenge a few assumptions that are held by all of society. They've become the people that they originally rebelled against, the establishment. Eric, well said. Yeah, but then again, I'm a backpedaler, and you know, what's it worth? 
Mark in Huntington Beach, you're on Real Radio 97.1. Hey, guys, I have a good story to tell you. Uh, I really laughed when Crosby said he had 10 years of sobriety. Oh, you know what? I don't know that we should get into yeah, this. Yeah, I don't want to get into uh, yeah, Look, you know, it's, you know, it's, you know, I, you know. Uh, you can, uh, you have your story and tell yeah, me off the I don't air. need the slander. Look, uh, you know, maybe he has, maybe he hasn't. I don't give a damn. We had a disagreement today, and that's enough. Dave and San Clemente, you're on Real Radio 97.1. Hey, I just wanted to say that these people that are in this AA program are just have absolutely no sense of humor. They just don't get it. My brother's been in it for 10 years, and he talks to the guy. It's like talking to a stone wall. Well, you know what happens? Everybody has their religion. Some people have the religion of God. Some people have the religion of government. And some people have the uh, religion of, uh, of uh, you know, whatever doctrine they're into. Like uh, the AA people have the religion of... Uh, healing and sobriety and they get and religious people whether it's uh, god or uh, drugs or government are humorless people they get on their rant and nobody can knock them off there's no discussion it's all rant 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 so what, what do you expect I, you know i the guy we were talking to him before we went on the air and we were having a nice conversation i thought we'd get into some interesting things he was willing to talk about a lot of stuff but uh, you know, once the name calling and the pushing starts, I don't need that. Goodbye. If you want to talk about, you came here to talk about boring stuff. Goodbye. That's it. That's that's where, what it comes down to. And it's so uh, astonishing that uh, Mr. Constitutionalist, Mr. Uh, anti uh, drug. I, you know, I took the drugs for eighty years, and now uh, I'm against them. Can't even uh, you know open up a little bit and uh, understand somebody else's point of view. Or even be able to listen to another point of view. You yeah. know, there's the, when there are, uh, when there are different points of view, somebody's right and somebody's wrong. But let's not stop the conversation. Let's right. not say anybody who has any other point of view that's something different than zero tolerance on drugs, in of all things, rock and roll, yeah, should not be listened to. That's what I wanted to ask. I mean, we've talked about this before. Rock and roll is great because of drugs in part. No, I agreed with them. I said, look, after a while, it catches up with you, and you got to control that. you got to keep on top of that. But at some point, if people take drugs because they want to open up their mind. How can you cut off avenues of inquiry in anything? This is what scientists do. You know, you, most people would throw out bad chicken soup. Somebody didn't. We have penicillin. However that was discovered. If he Moldy food. If he would have been talking to somebody who was uh, 55 years old in 1964, who would have adopted the attitude that he adopted, he, he well, he would have walked out then, too, except he would have walked out for different reasons. He, no, he would have had a sit-in. <laughs> Susie in L.A., you're on Real Radio 97.1. Hi, you guys. I, just, I agree with you, Larry, about the point of um, the drugs open up your mind for creativity and, you know, for your thinking and all that. But it seems to me it sort of begs the question that it's a trade-off. What's more important, a couple months of creativity and, you know, superstardom or a lifetime of... That's a great question. I wish, I wish David Crosby would, uh, had the, yeah. uh, the, the, uh, patience, the patience, the, the stand, the balls, the, uh, the, uh, uh gentlemanship or whatever, to stay here and discuss that. Fine. Exactly. So maybe I'm wrong. Let's just for argument's sake say, I'm totally wrong. I don't know what I'm talking about. Stay here and tell me why. Yeah, educate now, me. Now listen to my it point. to me if he would have yeah. stayed, then he could have done a lot of people a lot of good. I don't know if he would have taken back what he's done, but at least he could clear up some issues that people have. And how can he be so adamant about you asking questions when it's so right. clear that drugs were, you know, the key to his success for right. so long? Yeah, I'm not here to do boring radio and listen to a exactly. PSA for a half hour people about a charity. This, people, this people, is not the BBC. Yeah. And he's he's joking himself if he thinks that, you know, nobody wants to know about his drug I mean, drugs and CS, you know, Crosby, Stills, and NASA, are, you know, synonymous. all the time. Right, yeah. right. So, anyway, but, you know, I just want you to know that... Coke snorting and needles, that's what it stood for. Yeah, I mean, that's not that it's a good thing, but, but the, you know, but again, I mean, I really wish you would have addressed that because it seems to me a lot of kids are thinking, oh, God, you know, if I take this or that, then my music will be so much greater. Yeah, well, now you've seen the underbelly of celebrity confession. Celebrity confession is... I'll only let you uh, know what I what you what I think you need to know, and the uh, uh, the uh, real honest discussion of my confession is uh, not to be discussed at all, or else I'm walking out. And uh, you know, I'm I'm here to tell all. You know, I did it for so many years. I'm here to tell you. Well, what about the ramifications of all that? Why don't you tell somebody how uh, what it's like if you take drugs, how you lose your health insurance? Why Why did uh, Woody Herman lose his house? What did he do to lose his house? That's yeah. a hard thing to do to lose your house. He must have done something. Why don't you tell us about that before we feel sorry for a guy? I mean, I'll give to charity if I know why uh, I'm, I'm giving to that person. 
I mean, uh, and I wanted to get, uh, we've talked about this, the liver uh, donation thing. You know, yeah. I, I want to donate my liver too, but I'm not just giving it to anybody because it might be you. A guy who disagrees with me. Right. A guy who <laughs> wants to push me and call, an, uh, call me an effing idiot because uh, I disagree with him. Well, uh, nobody's getting my organs. I, I've decided because most people are against me. You know, I think I'm taking, guys, them, I'm taking them to the grave. If you want them, dig me up and tear them out. That's it. I think there's probably somebody out there who uh, has been uh, clean and sober for about a month and heard that interview and said, you know what? I'm going to start drinking again. <laughs> I mean, if I'm going to lose my sense of humor completely. 520-9710 from L.A. in the Valley from Orange County, 977-9710. It's the uh, regular guys and Larry Wax, and uh, that is Eric Von Hessler. You demand. You talking to me? No, just felt like saying it. When I when I am talking to you, I'll look at you. Okay. Well, the people listening don't know. When well, I'm talking to you, I'll hit you. All right. Let me talk to uh, Sarah in Irvine real quick on Real Radio ninety seven point one. I think you guys are ignorant because mm -hmm. here's somebody who's trying to get sober, and they've been ten years sober in a better way of life. Who are you referring to? This whoever you're talking about, this Crosby guy. David Crosby. You don't even and know I'm who he is. Oh. I'm a year sober. And you know who he? Wait, wait. First of all, Sarah. Uh, do you know who he is? I've seen him at media. This is Bing Crosby's son, right? <laughs> yes, that's correct. Okay. <laughs> I'm just mad because you guys are like... No, he's not, Bing, he's not Bing Crosby's son. Who is he? He's a rock musician just, from the I'm 60s. I'm talking about... The you ever hear of Crosby, Stills, and Nash? Oh, whoever. But anyway, right. I'm talking about being sober. That's why I'm resentful to you guys. Are you sober right now? Yes, I have a year sober. I just took a year cake two weeks ago. What were you doing? Drugs and alcohol. Well, what kind of drugs? I was doing drinking alcohol and I was doing like marijuana and coke and. Oh, you're a, you're a lightweight. He, he was doing smack. Goodbye to you. You know, it's. Seems... I just love, I just love the give and take between the former junkies and the man who's been sober all his life. Yeah, the former junkies, they're so tolerant. You know, uh, you know, guess what? My property was robbed because of you, not the other way around. So don't sit here and say, uh, I should put you, the junkie, or the former junkie on a goddamn pedestal. I'm the one who's been sober in control of my life. All of a sudden, I should have reverence for you, Sarah from Irvine, David Crosby. I should have reverence for you because all of a sudden, you've, uh, you've woken up something I've known all my life. So don't let, don't let substances control me. Oh, well, now, 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 uh, 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 40 years into your life, you discover this and I should have reverence for you. You know all the facts. Who's the expert here, Sarah? For God's sakes, what has happened? Uh, it's so Orwellian. It's topsy-turvy, uh, what's happening. Higgledy-piggledy. It's higgledy-piggledy. There's hootery and derision. Where, and which one of the 12 steps says you must lose your sense of humor? <laughs> I think that's the same step. Lose your sense of humor, take yourself way too seriously. Yeah, and put yourself on a pedestal for making mistakes. This is the way of America now. Those who make mistakes and fail and uh, lose vision of common sense are now heralded as the experts in the therapeutic world of the United States of America. We have our wonderful ther uh, therapists all over, like uh, David Crosby is one of our leading therapists now. Guy's got a story to tell, but you can't cut off all the discussion from the other way. You can't say, well, nobody in the world can disagree with me because I went through it. Well, guess what? Everybody who went through it doesn't even have the same exact story. It used to be, uh, I don't know what year this was, but people who uh, uh, beat the odds, people who uh, avoided trouble, people who saw a way out of doing something that everybody else was making a mistake on were uh, hailed as heroes. Now it's the other way around. The guy who is sober all his life, the guy who doesn't get involved with substances to the detriment of his uh, finances and his family, a guy such as me, is now the effing idiot of the airwaves. I'm the effing idiot of the airwaves because I have some uh, uh, questions to bust the assumptions of the former junkies. It's, it's astounding. What a great country we live in where the heroes are the ex-junkies. And Sarah has bought into this, clearly, this mentality that, hey... How dare you speak to me in less than reverential tones? Because, because I'm clean. That, because now I'm clean. Because I used to uh, take drugs. You didn't. You have no room to speak. <laughs> okay. Very nice. It's you know, maybe I can tell you a thing or two about being clean and sober because I am and have been. And I've never, drugs have never been in control of me. Right. How about the fact that uh, not only uh, have I uh, not let drugs control me, 
But in fact, at times I have used drugs and controlled them. I've had great periods of uh, unparalleled creativity. And fun. Yes. Let's right. not pretend that these substances can never, ever be fun. That, that when people go clean and sober, the attitude is always the same. It's like, hey, I can't handle my drugs, so neither can you. My fun is over. Eric, there was a man once. I don't know his name. But his legacy lives on. Let's call him Fred. I'll call him Fred, Eric, because that's a good name. Fred, as you know, long ago at a party, dabbled in some substance. His legacy? The lampshade on the head. It started someplace. It sure did. There was a time there were no lampshades. There was a time that nobody thought to put them on their heads. Today, we have the lampshade on the head at the party. Somebody started that, and it would not have been started if somebody wasn't experimenting. We wouldn't have that wonderful, right. good-time visual of the boss getting a little too tipsy and putting the lampshade on his head. That's correct. I like a moment of silence for the man who put a lampshade on his head because he dabbled in substance abuse for a short period of time and had a burst of creativity. <laughs> a man who changed the world for the better spread a little bit of joy. I'd like to erect a statue in Billboard Live for this man. And I'd like to say his number will be retired forever. No longer can we wear number 40. Oh, <laughs> you're up. I would like Spike Lee to make a film. <laughs> you know, there's a, you're right about Fred, but there's also a guy named Jim who was the first guy to crap himself during a hangover. So okay. It's not all up. <laughs> <laughs> Fine with me, but it start all this creativity starts someplace. Uh, Mike in Anaheim, you're on Real Radio 97.1. If you'd like to make a call, ah, screw you. Call. Screw you, bitch. Jack in Santa Monica, you're on Real Radio 97.1. I can't believe how insensitive and how crazy you guys are. All you're trying to do is be shocking. Uh, what is so shocking about saying that the Beatles were better with marijuana than they were without? What is shocking Bobby, about that? Just, just going off on David Crosby because he no, was no, no, no. Excuse me, Jack. No, excuse me, Jack. You aren't here. Hey, shut. Hey, shut up a second. You hey, aren't here. Okay. Shut up. Yeah. Well, you will because I just turned you off. That's Stop being the shocking. Control I have. I, I'm being shocking now. Apparently, he missed the fact that uh, I only uh, brought up a point, and David Crosby was the one calling me an effing idiot and pushing me. Wanted to, uh, you want a little fist fight? I'll go around with him. Here, I'll tell you what. I'll raise money for Music Cares. David Crosby and I go in the ring. How about that? Hey, you want to hear something else Come shocking? Come on, I'll go after him. Two punches to the belly. That liver will be flopping around on the canvas. I got something shocking to say, and what? this is the forum. The sky is not always blue. <gasps> John in Santa Monica, you're on Real Radio 97.1. Yeah, the way this man treated you, it totally goes the opposite of what the 12 steps teach you. I've been sober... 15 years. And we I, love you, John. You know, but this guy's wrong the, the way he talked to you like that. It's just not right. And he will drink behind that unless he comes back and makes an amends to you. I don't care about his amends. You know, I think I'll guys, see him in the ring. Oh, wait, like he'll go into the 12-step thing and say, uh, and, you know, I was on a radio show and a, well, a couple of idiots and I got have, out of line. You have to understand the dynamics behind this is that people, alcoholics and drug addicts, drink for effect, the feeling it gives you. And there's an amends list and stuff like that. And when you feel bad about something, it'll catch up to him. Hey, uh, he'll drink behind it. Hey, uh, did you did David Crosby uh, appear his appearance today make you want to start drinking again? Not me, but I didn't like. See, I, it would make me. I would start drinking again. He, he's a poor representative of the twelve step program. Yeah, so you don't want to be a part of that program. Well, I don't want to be. I I, I use those steps on my daily basis. Yeah. Uh, to get along in life, but I don't go around pushing people, yelling at him, screaming at him. Yeah, Larry, I don't my mind in a sense of humor. Well, good for you. See, uh, you have a sense of humor, it seems. So you, you, you are, are not you are not told to lose your sense of humor no. when you start the twelve step program. No. All right. Thank you, John. You're welcome. And God bless you. God bless you. You know, God, I, you, I, I don't believe it. Right? I, there's a, 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 my, a brother of mine was a serious alcoholic. and uh, went Which the, one? Uh, Which, can you narrow uh, it down to like three or four? No, this guy was a serious alcoholic, Bob, my brother Bob. And uh, he, he, he went clean a long time ago, but he never lost his sense of humor. And he, he would use what he needed from these people, yeah. and he would discard the rest. Like, they wanted him to blame his parents. And he said, I'm not going to do that. It's my fault. I went too far. It's nobody else's fault. And he never lost his sense of, you know, he, he would just use what he needed and discard what he didn't need. I think too many people just feel they have to digest the whole thing and believe it all, like a religion. 
Hey, what part of the 12-step program is uh, to stop overeating? <laughs> uh, our friend David has not uh, gotten there yet. No, I think that's hasn't. 12. Oh, is it? Yeah, he's some belly. I guess he got an extra, uh, he got the wrong size liver, and he needed an extra big belly to hold it he in. He wasn't exactly thin going in. No, he wasn't. No, I'm headed there. Now, that Graham know. Nash, thin as a rail, right. always has been. Right. Stephen Stills, I think, fluctuates. When they, uh, I have to ask my brother about this, because he's a liver transplant surgeon, but I believe they, uh, they measure you before they actually put in the liver. So you can get it, you can request this. You know, I know I'm first on the list and I'm going to die in a week, but if it's not the right size. Please. Please. You know, get, I need a size 12. Everything else in my home is custom designed, and if I'm going to live, I'm going to uh, live in class.